Welcome, my friends, to my new course on algebraic foundations of cryptography. This is identical with the course Algebraic Foundations that I will, that I will publish on my math channel. But here on my Hackflix channel, I want to emphasize that this course is designed with a view towards cryptography. So the algebra you will learn here will be very useful for studying cryptography at one point or the other. Now let us first discuss what algebra actually is. So algebra is the science of the structure of equations and computations. To clarify this, structure here refers to the laws that govern the operations between the objects appearing in the computations, the numbers for example in the simplest case, and some further non-obvious properties that emerge from these objects and their laws. Such structures clearly depend on the types of numbers that we study and the variables that may appear in the computations. Now a variable is a symbol that does not belong to the domain of numbers that is allowed in our computations, but it may represent an arbitrary element of this domain. So for example, you're familiar with the letter x being used as a variable for, let's say, integer numbers, where x may represent any integer number you like, but obviously x itself is not an integer number. The term algebra goes back to the Persian mathematician Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khwarizmi in the 8th to 9th century, and it actually comes from his method for solving quadratic equations. Al Jabo. And among his achievements are a textbook on astronomy and the first known textbook on what we nowadays call algebra. So, this is where this term originates from. And back then, algebra was not studied as a pure math area, but it was used for practical applications such as measuring or accounting. Furthermore, al Khwarizmi translated many classical scientific texts from the Greek into Arab and thus actually preserved their use and extended the methods developed by the Greeks. And also to his credit goes the term algorithm for problem-solving problem procedures. And this is simply derived from al Khwarizmi's name. And yeah, it has been mangled over time a little bit, so al Khwarizmi somehow turned into algorithm. The language of algebra is that of sets and maps between sets. Namely, the sets we're looking at restrict the objects belonging to a particular algebraic structure, for example, a set of certain numbers. And then whatever these numbers are will also give us some laws that govern these objects. The algebraic operations of our algebraic structures are maps that accept as input several objects from a set and produce another object as output, which most of the time is taken from the same set, but not always. And the most important maps between two different algebraic structures are called morphisms. And these are maps that translate the operations in one algebraic structure to the operations in the other algebraic structure. So in the way these Morphisms are maps that exhibit some kind of compatibility between two algebraic structures. An algebraic structure can be viewed as an encoding of certain rules on a system. So from this perspective, we can find algebraic structures arising from any type of regular pattern or symmetry or repetition or a law of motion. For example, algebra appears in nature in the form of symmetries and conservation laws in physics, or even in the configuration of elementary particles. That's a very interesting area. But on the other hand, algebra also arises artificially because it's a great tool to construct systems that have certain properties we desire, and we can conveniently describe problems and solutions for certain artificial systems. And we can also use it to control complexity 
for certain systems, uh, which is used in cryptographic algorithms, where we actually want to have more complexity in some situations in order to have unbreakable ciphers. And algebraic structures are one tool that we can use to construct this stronger complexity. The goal of this course is to provide algebraic foundations required in university level mathematics. And this will be relevant in many areas. For example, to study linear algebra in its proper context, to study polynomial equations in one or multiple variables, to understand transformation groups in geometry and topology, in number theory or in engineering applications such as coding and cryptography. And this is in fact one of the motivating applications for me to make this course. So I will have an eye on this, even though it will not be a course on cryptography, but the stuff I study here will always be with a view towards cryptography. There are some prerequisites for this course that you really should have. For example, you should be acquainted with elementary set theory, including maps and relations and proof techniques. So this stuff is covered by my Mathflix course, Introduction to Mathematics, at least the first few videos from that course. So this is where you can catch up on this if you do not have these prerequisites, but it would be really helpful to know this stuff before you start, because this is simply the notation and language I will use. And if you're not familiar with it, you might get lost quickly. In addition, I will often use examples from linear algebra. So examples that require matrix vector calculus. And if you're not familiar with this basic linear algebra, then you could simply ignore these examples and just listen to the rest of the course and you will still be fine. You will miss out on a few interesting examples, but the rest of the course will still make sense. Also, I have a course on my math channel, Mathflix, which is linear algebra in 2D. So if you watch that course, you should be familiar with most of the knowledge you will need for these linear algebra based examples. I will divide this course into four sub courses, each building on the previous one, and they will cover one among the most important families of algebraic structures. So part one will be about groups, part two will be about rings, three will be about fields, and in the final part four I will just cover a bunch of other algebraic structures that are not as common or important as the first three, but might still be relevant to you one day or the other. Well, that's it for the introduction. Thank you for your attention. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel and tell all your friends about this upcoming amazing course on algebra.